If you like this video, please go ahead and consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you have not already. And please, by all means, share this video. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 map first impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at Wolfhagen. But before that, this video is brought to you by Moose Farms and 5 Gen Farms. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Wolfhagen map found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you some of the description. Welcome to the world of Wolfhagen. This imaginary world gives you a feeling of being in reality. Some parts have been tried to be smaller or tried to be similar. This farm, which has a medium-sized field, has some low-flowing stream running through the middle and there is a large farm next to the stream. Some of them have meadows reserved for livestock. A beautiful world awaits you with a forest, a small settlement, and factories in between. I recommend playing with friends because the fields can be quite large, and I wish you a pleasant game. Now, there is an important note, but I do have a caveat to note, so don't get all up in arms quite yet. The Platinum Expansion DLC is required. Some buildings have been added. Now, I did load this map up with the Platinum Expansion DLC unchecked, and the map loaded up just fine. So, if you don't own the Platinum Expansion, you can still use this map. Just note, some of the buildings at the farms just won't be there. It's not that big of a deal. For example, the farmhouse. It's not there because it's a Platinum Expansion farmhouse. But you can put down your own, so it really doesn't matter. So it's more like Platinum Expansion DLCs suggested or recommended, right? But absolutely not required. On the map, you'll find the following. An animal farm, which large farm animals reserved for cows, sheep, chickens, pigs. There is starting equipment there as well. Main farm comes with starting tools, a field, and a large farm buildings. There are 12 farmlands, four meadows, one forest, one large forest and small forest, BGA, traffic, pedestrians. There are various productions available, as well as various sell points. Now, while this map does not have any required mods of its own, we will be loading up the mods we typically use when we look at maps. They are additional field info, additional game settings, animal food overview, field lease, field calculator, precision farming, and straw harvest. If you happen to load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find that farms are built out exactly how you see them here in new farm mode. You do have starting machinery in all game modes. You do have buildings in all game modes. The only difference is you do not own the land and, of course, your bank balances. In addition, if you happen to have a lower end system, you should have zero issues whatsoever in running this map. I even checked down by the town area, which is loaded with buildings and trees. And I was getting a nice, solid 60 FPS pretty much wherever I looked. Uh, I do use a system with integrated AMD graphics when I do do that low-end setting test. So if you have anything that may possibly have a discrete GPU, then you should be pretty good. Now, when this map was loading in, I did notice a few errors pop up. Uh, and they appear to be related to straw harvest and the straw harvest pellet pellets. So this may be uh, this this may be related to straw harvest getting an update. This may not have anything to do with the map itself. I'll have to look into that a little bit further in exploring what other map what happens with respect to other maps. When we load in here for the very first time, we start here at uh, the entrance to our farm. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. Now, this is a fairly basic map, and as I said, it's going to run pretty good on just about any system. You have two farms, one right here in the middle and one down here, and then several fairly large fields kind of scattered around with the bulk of your town over here to the west. And then we have some cell points to the north and a few cell points to the south. We do have access to all of the crops available to us in FS22, including our red beets, carrots, and parsnips with respect to the premium expansion. 
If we take a look at our lands overview, we start off by owning Farmland ID 1, which includes the main starting farm, for $980,000. In addition, we have Farmland ID 7, which can be bought for $1.4 million. So even though everything is built out exactly how we're going to see it here, I do suggest starting in new farmer mode because the land can be fairly expensive. And, well, if you've already got the land, you've already got the machinery, then why not? Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. This is going to show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, and if those farmlands include any fields, which fields are included. Then lastly, how much is that farmland going to cost? And we can see, well, there are lots of farmlands going to be rather expensive here. Farmland ID 3, which includes field 4, is $2 million. Farmland ID 9, which includes field 13, is nearly $2 million. And Farmland ID 11, which includes fields 11 and 10, are going to be, again, $2 million. Let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. This is going to show us the specific sizes of each particular field. And we can see here the smallest field on the map. Well, the smallest field is going to be 5.49 hectares. Meanwhile, the largest field on the map is going to be field four at 31.92. Take a look at our crop counter. We do have the standard FS22 crop counter available to us here on this map. And if we take a look down through our prices screen, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops. In addition, we do have the ability to sell our eggs, oil, and milk, and our silage, hay, straw, and grass. Story does continue as we take a look down through all of our base game productions, with the exception of one production, and that is planks. For whatever reason, we do not have the ability to sell planks on this map, even though we do have a sawmill pre placed. We do, thankfully, though, have the ability to sell furniture, but sadly, still, there isn't a carpentry shop pre placed on the map. So if you want to get into furniture, you're going to have to put your own down. We do have the ability to buy bulk lime, but we do not have the ability to sell stones. So if you do play with stones enabled, you will need to put down your own sell process or stone sell point. The farm production pack is also not going to be available here on this map. So you will need to put down your own sell point if you wish to wash your root crops, as well as with the platinum expansion. While the platinum expansion may be required for some buildings to pop up, it seems that it has not been implemented in any other way, which is a little bit disappointing. With respect to our premium expansion, we do have the ability to sell all of the crops and equipment there. If you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do have the ability of getting rid of your separated manure, as well as your hay and straw pellets with the straw harvest add-on. With respect to our starting fleet, we own all of our starting machinery, and we start out with a fairly big listing of starting machinery. It is all also well maintained. So if you wanted to clear house here, you would end up with a pretty good nest egg after the fact. We have four animal areas at the start. None of them have any animals in them. We do have contracts available on this map. We do not own any production chains. And lastly, this map does not have any collectibles. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the New Holland T7315HD, John Deere 6250R, and the Massey Ferguson AS305 medium tractors. We've got the John Deere 8R410, the Magnum 400 power drive, the Fent 942 Vario, the Kloss Axion 960. We have the Fent 939, the John Deere 7R350, the Fent 930, the John Deere 7R270, all large tractors. We also have the New Holland CR 10.90 Harvester that is paired up with the Superflex 45 foot Draper Grain Header. We've got our 1986 pickup truck as well as the Flegel TMK 273 trailer. We have a pair of Brantner DD24073 2XXL trailers. And we have the Brantner TA23071 Power Push Plus and the TA23065 slash two two plus trailer the brandner z 18051 slash two xxl power flex trailer as well so pretty much the entire brandner trailer line and a flegal talk about being the third wheel we've got the horse coltrino 9 tc 
Mulcher that is a part of the Horse Aggravation Pack. So if you do have that activated start, you will have that Mulcher. If not, then that Mulcher just won't appear. We have the Lemkin Titan 18 Plow, as well as the Lemkin Coralon 9840 Cultivator. We've got the HR 6040 RCS Power Harrow. We have the Trailed Aeon 5200 Delta Force Herbicide and Liquid Fertilizer Sprayer. We have the Breed LK165 Fertilizer and Lime Spreader. We have the Samson US 235 Dynamic Manure Spreader, as well as the PFW 18000 Max Line Plus Flagel Slurry Tank Applicator. We've got the GXT 1305P Collector bat wing a mower oh, not really a bat wing but kind of a a trailed rear mower and the gxf 3605p front mower we've got the Kloss cargos 9500 forage wagon the new holland big baler 1290 hd square baler we have the john deere 700m and quickie q7m front loader arms for the front loader arms we have the ruby 2000 sugar beet cutter and then the bale spike and we have, well, a series of front weights. We've got a pair of 3,300 kilogram front weights, a pair of 2,300 kilogram front weights. And as far as mods and DLCs, well, this map does not have any custom vehicles or implements. With respect to our farm tour, we have our farmhouse located right here. And this is going to be the Platinum Expansion Farmhouse, or one of the Platinum Expansion Farmhouses. With our sleep trigger. With respect to what can we sell here on the farm, we can sell everything. We can sell the fence, the light posts, the farmhouse, all of the sheds. Not a problem at all. So we have our pickup truck. We have our little weather station. Very, very large sheds are going to be available here on this map for our machinery. For whatever reason, we have three. Count them. One, two, and three power washers. I guess if you're a multiplayer, you're going to play a power wash simulator, and you can have up to two other friends doing the same. We've got a fuel tanker. We have a seed and mineral feed silo, as well as a liquid herbicide silo or liquid fertilizer silo there as well. Here are some more sheds that are part of the Platinum Expansion. And again, if you don't load the Platinum Expansion up, the farmhouse and these two sheds just will not be present. We've got a water trigger. And then we also have a solid fertilizer silo right there. We've got our massive grain silo with our dump and fill areas. We have a scale house. And this is another Platinum Expansion shed. So if you don't have that activated, this shed just won't pop up. Not that big of a deal. And you're going to find the vast majority of your tractors are going to be located inside of here. We have a service trigger. And all of our tractors and harvester lined up nice and neat. Now that is this farm. There is a animal farm to the south. So let's just go ahead and jump down there. And here we have our New Holland. We have our Massey Ferguson and our John Deere. We've got the cow shed with feeding robot. We have our slurry point, we have our mineral feed area, and then we have our silage, straw, and hay drop-offs for that. If you do wish to feed your cows manually, you can still do so by bringing the feed directly into here. This is also where you're going to bring your straw. We can have a total of 80 cows in here. And then we have the milk trigger there as well. Got a large three-sided silage bunker. Nice shed to store bales in or other loose material. For the manure heap, we have liquid fertilizer storage. We've got our pigs, so we've got our food trough. We 
We have a total of 270 pigs in here. And our slurry point. We have 65 sheep with our food and then our wool trigger. Chickens are next, so we have our egg point. We have our food and our chicken drop off. 360 chickens here as well. And that is pretty much the animal farm. Another really large shed here also for storage. Now let's jump up here because I do recall that we just completely skipped over the precision farming soil map. This map is making use of the U.S. soil map that is a part of the precision farming mod. So let's go ahead and see how that is being applied to these fields. As you can see across the entirety of the map, we have diagonal bands of all of the various soil types from loamy sand, sandy loam, loam, and silty clay. Let's get a little bit of altitude here and we'll take a look around. Overall, this is a fairly flat map. As such, it'll be pretty easy to use just about any size tractor with any reasonably sized machinery. So you won't have to worry about oversizing your machinery with respect to hills and such. I think we'll make our counterclockwise rotation around the map. Down below field six, we do have the biogas plant. As you can see, the biogas plant is basically a transplant of the Elm Creek biogas plant. So we have our two digesters there, our interactive icon. We have our dump point for our slurry and our fill point for our digestate. We also have two very large three-sided silage bunkers. We have a grain cell point down here to the extreme south. And you may find some of these utility poles through the various fields. These utility poles do have collisions. So if you do hire help or you are using your own labor, you will have to drive around those. Or if you're playing and using something like course play, you'll have to make sure the course is set up to have kind of the islands feature. Over here we have our bowling alley and our bowling alley cell point. Now to the left we have our large starting farm. And while we know the power towers do have collisions, let's see if these wooden poles do as well. Yes, they do. As far as our scoring goes, the map has six productions pre-placed. We have the BGA, we have a grain mill, sugar mill, oil mill, spinnery, and sawmill. Down below we have a biomass heating plant. So this is going to be a log or wood chip selling point. So we're going to be giving the map a full point with respect to production being built in or areas set aside for such. Back to here we have our sawmill. So we have the wood chip point there. We have our interactive icon. We have our pallet spawn point. And then around here we have our wood drop off and our wood cell trigger. With respect to the ability to sell arbor basing crops, animal outputs, and productions, we are going to be giving the map three quarters of a point because we do not have the ability to sell our planks. Here we have our farmer's market sell point. We have our fuel depot located up here just to the west of the north part of field 13. We have our animal dealer, which is a little chunk out of field 13. 
So we have our animal dealer trigger right there. And then we have our animal dealer cell point located right there. We have our flower mill, so we have our dump point interactive icon, and then our pallet spawn point. And this is the town that I was talking about, kind of just flying through at a low level on an integrated system, and I didn't have any issues with all of these buildings or these trees. We've got our grocery store cell point with the dump station located right there. We have a lime buy point. We have three productions over here in a row. We have our oil mill. We have our sugar mill. And we have our spinnery. All of these are base game FS22 buildings. So I don't think we need to go into a whole lot of detail as to where those triggers are located. Sorry, I temporarily got lost. <laughs> uh, here we have our vehicle shop. So we have our dealer trigger. And we have our shop trigger. And let's go ahead and pick up our Mahindra. We'll see where our vehicles spawn. Here we are, fairly large area for our vehicles to spawn in at. And given the size of these fields, that is something that we are gonna much appreciate. We've got a very large area here to get out of the machine shop or dealer. And well, the roads not super wide. They're also not too terrible and narrow. I'm not really sure what's going on with the paint on the road, but mm, no, okay. Then here we have our second fuel station on the map down here to the south. And that is going to be pretty much cover this map as far as where everything is. Now let's continue and talk about our scoring. Like I said, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point with respect to our productions, the ability to sell our base game props and animal outputs. We're going to give the map a full point with respect to the ability to customize our farms because we can sell everything on these farms, including the farmhouse and the fencing. Buildings where appropriate are using the new texturing technique, so we are going to give the map a full point there as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at our landscaping. Fairly standard landscaping textures as well as standard plants and fairly standard trees. And then trigger and interactive areas clearly marked. We're gonna go ahead and give the map a full point there as well. So that's gonna wrap this map up with a score of 4.75 out of five. I think this would be a really good map for multiplayer as the map author kind of listed because we do have some fairly large fields. Now I think this is gonna be better for a collective multiplayer as opposed to a multiplayer where you have multiple players running multiple farms, simply because we really only have two farm areas and we've got a fairly limited number of fields. But as far as being a nice light map where you can have four or five of your friends on doing collective harvests all over the place, I think it's gonna be set up for a pretty good time. I'd like to know your all thoughts down in the comments below. And until next time, happy farming.